If you've been believing for healing, it's just a moment away. A heart decision today can change your life. If you believe Jesus Christ is the healer, you must have confidence in his ability to heal. When you face a test, see it as an opportunity to receive the greatest joy. Someone without faith cannot see their difficulties as an opportunity for joy. But because we believe in Jesus, we know our situation is an opportunity to honor God before men and let him be glorified in our So I wanted to share this with you to let you know it's not about preparing your heart and saying, I'm coming here to receive healing today. There is power in the Word of God. It's not about going from one conference to another. It's about believing in Jesus Christ. Conferences are wonderful. They help boost our faith. They're interesting. They're great. But the main thing, if you believe Jesus Christ is the healer, you must have confidence in His ability to heal. If you believe Jesus Christ is the Savior, you must have confidence in His ability to save you no matter what you're going through. If you believe that Jesus Christ is the light of the world, no matter how bad the darkness gets in your life, you must have confidence in His ability to flood you with light and dispel every shade of darkness. I believe I'm speaking to people who believe in Jesus. And so I want to give you a word today that will strengthen your faith and will push you to the next level in Christ. If you've been believing for healing, it's just a moment away. If you've been believing for deliverance and freedom from addiction, it can be just a moment away. Heart decision today can change your life. And we're going to use an example in the Bible that, re that references this, the woman with the issue of blood. So that's where we're going. But first, let's go to the book of James. We're going to take chapter 1, verse, four, verse 1 to 4, and then verse 12 to 15. The book of James, chapter 1, from verse 1 to 4. It says, Greetings. I'm reading the, the Passion Translation. It says, Greetings, my name is Jacob. It's James in other versions. And I am a love slave of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm writing to all the 12 tribes of Israel who have been sown as seeds among the nations. And I believe that this applies to everyone who believes in Christ Jesus. You are sown specifically as seeds among the nations for God to show His goodness, for God to show His glory. Amen? Do you believe that? All right. My fellow believers, verse 2, when it seems as though you're facing nothing but difficulties, see it as an invaluable opportunity to experience the greatest joy you can. For you know that when your faith is tested, it stirs up power within you to endure all things. And then as your endurance grows even stronger, it will release perfection into every part of your being until there is nothing missing and nothing lacking. If your faith remains strong, even while surrounded by life's difficulties, you will continue to experience the untold blessing of God. True happiness comes as you pass the test with faith and receive the victorious crown of life promised to every lover of God. When you are tempted, don't ever say, God is tempting me, for God is incapable of being tempted by evil, and He is never the source of temptation. Instead, it is each person's own desires and thoughts that drag them into evil and lure them away into darkness. Finally, verse 15, evil desires give birth to evil actions, and when sin is, and when sin is fully mature, it can murder you. So don't be fooled by your own desires. There's a lot to unpack here, I get it. But hope out the what we're going to call this message today, the title is Passing the Test of Faith. How many of you believe you're in a test of faith right now? <laughs> then this is a great message for you. I believe you will pass today in Jesus' name. Going from verse 2, it says, When you face a test, see it as an opportunity to receive the greatest joy. That's verse 2. It sounds so, so strange. This goes against common sense. When things are difficult, normally it makes you feel bad. It makes Maybe. you feel worse. But James says, see it as an opportunity for joy. That requires faith. Someone without faith cannot see their difficulties as an opportunity for joy. Someone who doesn't believe that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, when things go wrong, they can't say, yes, something good is about to happen. But because we believe in Jesus, we know our situation is an opportunity to honor God before men 
and let him be glorified in our life. As a Christian, we know that our situation gives us the opportunity to glorify God and for him to show his power in our life. When a Christian gets sick, it's an opportunity for Jesus to show he's the healer. If you're not sick, you don't need healing. When a Christian goes through difficulties, it gives God the opportunity to reveal himself as the deliverer. If you're not in trouble, if you're not in difficulty, you don't need deliverance. When you need provision, when you suffer lack or want, that's when you need the blessing provider, Jehovah Jireh. So the first step to passing the test of faith is to take the situation back from the hands of the devil. Could you look at the person next to you and say, my friend, my friend, take your situation, neem jouw situatie back terug from the hands uit de handen of the enemy. Van de, van de vijand. <laughs> I mean, don't let your situation deceive you. Don't give the devil more credit than he deserves. When we believe that our situation comes as an attack from the enemy, then we can stand against it. But when we believe that God has allowed this calamity to happen to me, there, there is a danger that we give up and get lazy in our faith. And we say, God, if it's your will, heal me. And if it's not the will of God, I won't be healed. But I want to tell you the Word of God says it is always God's will to heal. We're going to read 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24 later. It says, by the stripes of Jesus we were healed. That was once and forever. It paid the price for every healing. Jesus does not need to come back again for, for a new sickness. Jesus does not need to come back and be crucified again for a new problem. It was new problem. paid in full, once and for all. If you say that that's a scriptural um, example, where's the proof in reality? Look at your immune system. The immune system shows it's the will of God to heal you. Amazing. When you get sick, does your immune system give up? If it was the will of God for you to get sick and die in sickness, then your immune system would just shut off. But it doesn't. It keeps right. fighting. This should be our stance as Christians. Do you believe that? Are you ready to receive healing? Are you ready to give testimony of God's glory in your life? Amen. Let's turn to verse 3 and okay, take from there a little more. You know, when your faith is tested, it stirs up power within you to endure all things. So what it's telling you there is that if you have faith in Jesus as your healer, you will have confidence in his ability to heal you, no matter the situation you're going through. If you have faith, then you will believe Jesus is the healer and have confidence in his ability to heal all the time. From this confidence comes perseverance comes endurance, and comes patience. This is what we need to pass the test of faith. So what is a test of faith? Some people make a mistake of thinking that when you're in school, the whole time you're there is a test. This doesn't make sense. But for some, the moment they enter a difficulty, they say, God is testing me. I'm in a test. But when you're in school, you're not in a test when you're in the classroom. You're not in a test every day. You're in a test when you're sitting an exam and have the opportunity to be promoted. I want you to um, apply this to your daily life. Don't be quick to believe that everything you go through is a test. The Bible's full of examples in the New and Old Testament where it says God tests the heart of men. God tests their heart to know what is inside. That's true, but He doesn't do it out of wickedness. God doesn't test our heart looking to punish us. He does not make these situations as a harsh or unfair father. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and everything was perfect. That is the will of God. He never intended for us to have to go through trials and testing. But because of the sin-stained world, things that are not the will of God can happen. So don't be quick to take your situation and say, this is the will of God for my life. This is my identity now. If you do that, you will not have the faith to fight it. Yes, bad things can happen to good people. But if you've taken it back from the devil and put it in God's hands, it's an opportunity for God to glorify himself, to show himself in your life and to bless others through that. This is why I said, take it back from the hands of the devil and put it back in the hands of the Most High God. Amen. Going back, still in James, uh, we're going to uh, still James 1 from verse 12. If your faith remains strong... Even while surrounded by life's difficulties, you'll continue to experience the blessings of God. True happiness comes as you pass the test 
with faith and receive the victorious crown of life promised to every lover of God. Verse 13, when you are tempted, don't say God is tempting me. This is what I mean. Don't say God is testing me when you have a situation. God is not the author of killing, stealing, and destruction. The devil is. Everything to do with killing, stealing, and destruction is from the devil. It is not God. John 10 verse 10 declares that Jesus came to give us abundant life only. Sickness is part of stealing. Poverty is part of killing. It kills your joy. Every negative situation we can go through in life comes under these three categories, killing, stealing, and destruction. And while they are not from God, when you take the situation back from the hands of the devil by faith by, by geloof, and put it in God's hands, en je geeft in God's handen, he can even use that situation to promote you, to yeah. reward you. Hallelujah. Now we're going to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 5, 5 to 10. Are you blessed so far? Through our faith, once again, this is 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 5 onwards. Through our faith, the mighty power of God constantly guards us until our full salvation is ready to be revealed at the last time. May the thought of this cause you to jump for joy, even though lately you've had to put up with the grief of many trials. But these only reveal the sterling core of your faith, which is far more valuable than gold that perishes. For even gold is refined by fire. Your authentic faith will result in even more praise, glory, and honor when Jesus the Anointed One is revealed. You love Him passionately, although you did not see Him. But through believing in Him, you are saturated with an ecstatic joy, indescribably sublime and immersed in glory. For you are reaping the harvest of your faith, the full salvation promised to you, your soul's victory. What a wonderful scripture. Your faith is being revealed. Faith must be tested, must be proven, and will be rewarded. Can you say that with me? Faith must be tested. Geloof moet getest worden. Faith must be proven. Geloof moet beproefd worden. And faith will be rewarded. En geloof wil beloond worden. So faith must be tested. If you have it, it must be tested. And that's why situations do arise. They are an opportunity for you to show I have faith. So now we've covered why do situations happen? How do situations happen? Let's talk about how do we pass the test of faith. It is not enough for you to know you have faith. You have to show you have faith. To pass the test of faith, not only must you know your faith, you must show it. When we express the necessary faith in Christ Jesus, His duty is to raise us from death to life, from sickness to good health, from poverty to prosperity, from failure to success, and restore our relationship and wholeness with Him. We'll say that again. When we express the necessary faith, so not just faith, but the necessary faith, the level of faith, when we express the necessary faith in Jesus, His duty, His work, is to raise us from death to life. How do you pass the test of faith? Show the necessary faith when your faith is tested. So what then is faith? Let's define faith. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 is the most common definition of faith you'll find in the Bible. You can read that on your own and it's the common one everyone knows, the substance of things hoped for. Another way of putting it to make it more easy to understand. Faith is the unshakable confidence in the reality of the unseen world. That's the world of God. Faith imparts strength to the heart of a believer to endure when it seems the promises of God are delaying in fulfillment. Faith is a firm expectation that God will do what He said He will do. And I think the most simplest way I could say it is faith is a heart that believes God. So, do you have faith? I think everyone should be able to say yes. If your heart believes God, you have faith. And Jesus said, if you have the faith the size of a mustard seed, I believe you must have more than that. So you can pass the test of faith. That's what I want you to understand from this. You can pass it, and you can pass it today. A heart that believes God sees their good times as a reason to believe. 
as much as they see their hard times as a reason to believe as well. So, it means there's no change. When things are tough, I thank God and I look forward to the best which is yet to come. Mm. And when things are good, I thank God dan dank ik God. and I look forward to the best which is yet to come. Het... That is a heart that believes God. Oh. It's not only when things are good. Niet It's not only God. when things are bad. Hallelujah. Let's go on to another scripture. I want to turn to the book of John chapter 11 verse 40. And it will echo what was in the last verse of Peter where it said, though we see him, we do not see him, but believing we have ecstatic joy. Jesus looked at her and said, didn't I tell you that if you will believe in me, you will see God unveil his power? There's a phrase in English, I don't know if it's the same in Dutch, that says seeing is believing. That's a phrase in the world. Een, the Bible uh, reverses the order. We must believe first before we see. That is faith. Faith does not need you to feel or see something before you say it. Faith does not ignore your circumstances. It doesn't ignore what's going on. For example, if you have stomach pain, faith does not tell you to say, I, I ignore it. There is no such thing as stomach pain uh, when you have stomach pain. What faith will do is say, whether I have stomach pain or not, I believe Jesus is the healer and he can heal me. So I will say, thank you, Jesus. I'm healed before I feel it and before I see it. That's passing the test of faith. If you are waiting to see the fullness of God's miracle in your life before you say it, before you acknowledge it, before you thank him for it, you may not see it fully. You have to believe first and then you will see the glory and, of and God. Also Jesus believed first in what his father was able to do. Um, and then he spoke to Lazarus and we saw the glory of God. Jesus has promised glory in your life. You have to believe that. Yep. Speak it by faith and then you will see it. Every time we speak the word of faith, yeah. we hear ourselves. Other people will hear us, Old but Torah. most importantly, yeah. God will hear us. When we don't speak the word of faith, Take we it. only hear ourselves. Okay. Others can hear us too. But God will not act on that word. That's why Jesus said later in that chapter, Lord, I thank you for hearing me. We can, we can read it. It's uh, John 11 from verse 41. So they rolled away the heavy stone. Jesus gave, gazed into heaven and said, Father, thank you that you've heard my prayer. For you listen to every word I speak. So now that those who stand here with me will believe you have sent me, To, to the earth as your messenger, I will use the power you have given me. Then with a loud voice, Jesus shouted with authority, Lazarus, come out of the tomb. So Jesus didn't need to say that for himself. He believed. He knew. He said it so the people watching could hear and believe. This gives us a method of operation as Christians. For us to not only know our God and know our faith, but show it, we have to say it. Speaking the word of faith, speaking God's promises over your life out loud builds your own sense of assurance and confidence, and it can put others into the faith life. When they hear your bold confession and then see God confirm it with signs and wonders, that can change life. That can break strongholds. Right. That can renew minds. This is how you pass the test of faith. You believe in your heart, but you also confess with your mouth. Remember, the body of Christ is the authority on earth. He gave us the great commission and said, go on my behalf. Earlier in his earthly ministry, Jesus said, you are the church and the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. So the church is the most powerful organization on the earth. It's the only thing that the gates of hell cannot prevail against. If that's the case, we need to express our bold faith in God. We need to get out of fear Get out of doubting. Will God do it? Can God do it? Is it really his will now? We must know the will of God and be convinced about it. If not, we will be wavering. And a wavering faith does not bring Jesus on the scene. Hallelujah. We're going to the book of Mark, chapter 5, to give you an example of someone who exercised faith in a test of faith and passed the test. Mark 5 from verse 25. Now in the crowd that day, There was a woman who had suffered horribly from continual bleeding for 12 years. She had endured a great deal under the care of various doctors, yet in spite of spending all she had on their treatments, she was not getting better, but worse. Verse 27. When she heard about Jesus' healing power, she pushed through the crowd and came up from behind him and touched his prayer shawl. 
For she kept saying to herself, If only I could touch his clothes, I know I will be healed. As soon as her hand touched him, her bleeding immediately stopped. She knew it, for she could feel her body instantly being healed of her disease. Jesus knew at once that, something, that someone had touched him, for he felt the power that always surged around him had passed through him for someone to be healed. He turned and spoke to the crowd, saying, Who touched my clothes? The disciples answered, What do you mean, who touched you? Look at this huge crowd. They're all pressing up against you. But Jesus' eyes swept across the crowd, looking for the one who had touched him for healing. When the woman who experienced this miracle realized what had happened to her, she came before him, trembling with fear, and threw herself down at his feet, saying, I was the one who touched you. And she told him her story of what had happened. Then Jesus said to her, Daughter, because you dared to believe, your faith has healed you. Go with peace in your heart and be free from your suffering. There were many people that were pushing against Jesus. The crowd was huge, but there was one touch that was different. There was one touch that wasn't there because their friends told them to come. There was a touch from someone who was there, not because they heard a story. There was someone who had a touch of faith, a touch that I'm going to receive my healing now. This was her test of faith. Her years of sickness were not her test of faith. That was a situation she was in, but that was not the test. The test was when she came face to face with Jesus. Could she show the necessary faith? You have an opportunity today to show the faith in God, to show your faith in Jesus and to receive from him. He is here now. Jesus Christ, his power did not stop when he rose to heaven. Rather, his power is even greater today than in his earthly ministry because he is in all places at all times by the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ healed and still heals all manner of sickness, disease, and pain. How you pass the test of faith is to show him your willingness. You cannot get what you're not willing to pursue. If you want to get a doctorate's degree, you need to be willing to put in the work to get the degree. You cannot get what you're not willing to pursue. Do you want to receive healing from Jesus? You need to pursue it. Pursuing is not something you give up. Pursuing is not something you do halfway, stop and continue later. It is continuous. It requires endurance. It requires patience. It requires good times and hard times. Your genuine willingness plus God's ability produces healing. This is what happened in her example. She had genuine willingness to be healed. And Jesus' ability was on the scene. And she was able to press through the crowd. The crowd would have discouraged someone without faith. If she hadn't taken a heart decision that if I can just touch his garment, I will be healed, that huge crowd would have discouraged her. Imagine for her to just touch the the bottom of the prayer shawl, she probably wasn't trying to touch him like this. She was probably on her knees on the floor. All she would be seeing was dirty feet and sandals. Yet that didn't stop her. That couldn't say, make her say, no, I'm not going to be healed today. She pressed through. She touched and she received. Her faith was tested. Many of us, when we believe we're coming to Jesus, everything should be easy and smooth. If there's any test of faith on the way, we give up and go home. We say, oh, I can get healed next week. Oh, no, the ushers at the door weren't nice to me today. No, I don't need to bother with believing for healing today. The, 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 the workers in the church didn't treat me nicely, so I don't need to believe yeah. for healing. The person who made the coffee this morning made it too strong. It's not my day. Any little thing can discourage you if you don't have faith. The huge crowd would discourage anyone who did not have faith, but she had faith. How do we know she had faith? She did three things. She heard about Jesus. She wasn't from that city, but she heard and she went. The Bible tells us throughout the scriptures, he who has ears to hear, let them hear what God says. You need ears to hear to have faith. We have ears to hear gossip. We have ears to hear breaking news and story. But we must have ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. She had that. She didn't come there to confirm if Jesus was the healer or not. She didn't come there to see, maybe he can, maybe he can't. She made a heart decision, and then she spoke the words of faith. What was her word of faith? If I can just touch his clothes, I will be healed. The scripture says she said it to herself over and over and over. It wasn't just in her mind. 
She spoke it out and she did it. That is the way we need to exercise our faith. If you believe Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, today can be your moment. You don't need to look for a pastor, a fivefold minister of the church. You don't need someone to lay hands on you. You can receive from Jesus by faith as she did. But if you don't have enough faith for that, that's why there are ministers of God. That's why there are pastors, preachers, teachers, evangelists, prophets, and apostles to help us build our faith to where we can receive from Jesus directly. I'm going to take you to one more scripture and then come to the end. We're going to 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12 and 13. This is the Bible's explanation of what happens when you pass the test of faith. 1 Peter chapter 4, 12 and 13. Beloved friends, if life gets extremely difficult with many tests, don't be bewildered as though something strange was overwhelming you. Instead, continue to rejoice, for you in a measure have shared in the sufferings of the Anointed One so that you can share in the revelation of His glory and celebrate with even greater gladness. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are greatly blessed because the Spirit of glory and power, who is the Spirit of God, rests upon you. That is what happens when you pass the test of faith. The Spirit of glory and power rests upon you. In her case, she received complete healing. The paralyzed man in the book of Mark chapter 2, he was forgiven of his sins and healed. It can look different according to different circumstances. But one thing is clear. When you pass the test of faith, the power of God will come upon you. And something will happen that is beyond understanding. That is beyond human comprehension. Are you ready for that? Do you believe that? Are you hungry for that? Let me hear you shout. <laughs> Amen. I'd like you to rise up on your feet for a moment of prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word. In your word is our hope. In your word is our healing. In your word is our blessing. In your word is our eternal salvation. We pray for miracles today, Lord. Let your word bring it in our life. Let your word bring healing to our life. Let your word bring freedom to our life. Let your word bring blessing to our life. Let your word bring change in Jesus' mighty name. I want to ask you to remain standing right now. And wherever you are, just begin to speak the word of faith over your life. Begin to speak to Jesus right now and give him an opportunity to touch you. Say, Lord Jesus... I believe. Lord Jesus, I believe. I can receive from you today. I stretch out my hand by faith and I grab your garment as she did. I receive my healing today. I receive my deliverance today. I receive my freedom today. I command pain in my body. Go! I command discomfort in my body. Go in the name of Jesus. I command nightmares, go in the name of Jesus. Jesus. I command negative thoughts, go in the name of Jesus. I command addictions, break in the name of Jesus. I command poverty, go in the name of Jesus. I command blessing, come in the name of Jesus. My provision, come in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus Christ. Say with me, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Release your mighty power into my body, into my soul, into my spirit. Now, in Jesus' name. In Jesus Once name. again, Lord Jesus Christ, Christus. release your mighty power in my body, in my soul, in, in my spirit. In, my... in Jesus' mighty name. Je- I thank you, Jesus, for my healing. I am not healed because I feel I'm healed. I'm healed because I put my faith in your word and acted on it. I'm not saved because I feel I'm saved. This has nothing to do with my feelings, with my intellect, with my reasoning. It is a thing of the heart. I am not saved because I feel I'm saved. I am saved because I put my faith in your word and acted on it. May God bless his word in your hearts. Thank you.